Five things we learned from Manchester United versus Brighton. Yes, Brighton Munich spanked Manchester United. Three goals to one after that horrible performance for Manchester United. We are here to analyse and assess exactly the five things that were Manchester United versus Brighton. And of course, for those who are new to the channel, always remember to subscribe to Red United TV, first of all. And of course, follow Red United TV on Instagram, Red United TV 1, and follow us, especially on Twitter. And of course, Twitch. Let's get straight into it, guys, because Manchester United fucked up against Brighton Munich as well. Lost a lot of things, lost a lot of themselves, identity crisis and all sorts of stuff. So let's go straight into it, guys. First of all, number one, Manchester United are a 20 minutes team, guys. Yes, I said it. Manchester United cannot last the whole 90 minutes. For the last couple of games, we've seen the best of Manchester United within the first 20 minutes. And then after that, 20 minutes being unable to open the team up, you know, score chances as well for the chance that's been created. They then capitulate after 20 minutes and losing it all. You saw it against Arsenal. You saw it against Wolves as well. You also saw it against Nottingham Forest. There's been so many signs that Manchester United cannot last more than 45 minutes in terms of what they do, especially when they start off so well at their best, but capitulate. Against Brighton, the first 20 minutes was exceptional. And then once Manchester United conceded that goal, they caved in so easy. They folded like paper. Oh, my God, guys. And I know it was so stressful for you guys to see that. You know, that's one of the things. We just can't do it after 20 minutes, yeah? Well, one minute, man, for I have to say, you know, we're like Missy Elliott. Take me back. Show me what you got because I don't want no one minute, man. And Manchester United or one minute, man, team cannot perform for an all 90 minutes. Give you 20 minutes of their best thrusting. And then after that, they are finished. Number two, guys, Manchester United midfield is in crisis. And we cannot win the midfield battle for so long. Ever since, what, the last 13 years, Manchester United have been struggling to win a midfield battle. We all know in every game, midfield is key in terms of winning games. Manchester United have been overturned in midfield, ran through so easily. At times, it's been a polo in midfield for Manchester United, especially against Brighton. The midfielders of Casemiro, Scott McTominay, Christian Eriksen, and also Bruno Fernandes have failed Oh, tremendously. They just can't do it at all, man. The, the creativity is not there. The retaining the possession as well, winning the ball back, the pressing from that midfield is just not it for Manchester United. And we just can't continue to go on. Whether Ten Hag is one that has been addressing this in training, um, still haven't been really rectified at all and also hasn't been present that we've been working on it in training because for the last couple of years i say that again 13 years Manchester United have been losing the midfield battle and um these any manager that's been coming in just cannot fix this or resolve the situation and if until then Manchester United will be in trouble throughout the whole entire season winning the midfield battle guys is key to be title challengers to win games in general and also of course win, winning trophies in the important games Number three, we are tactically weak. Yes, we are tactically weak. We cannot do anything in terms of setup systems. We cannot execute a system. We played a diamond formation yesterday against Brighton and it failed miserably. We got found out within seconds, you know, and a Manchester United manager just couldn't really adapt and rectify it and also challenge the Zerbi as well. As soon as the Zerbi figured out he's and diamond formation figured out how to counter it and as well beat that diamond he Manchester United manager couldn't do anything he backfired the team as well as well cannot retain possession the pressing isn't the best tactically weak defensively as well we are not great um, conceding easy goals especially the first goal and also the second goal that we conceded and all the and as well the third goal tactically just being open um, so open on the left-hand side as well. Manchester United just showing that they're just not strong enough tactically. You know, and the manager as well, he's not strong enough tactically as well, the way he set up the team. Number four, guys, Marcus Rashford has been proving that he's just been greedy. Ever since he signed his new contract, 350k a week, he has been performing badly in each game ever since the start of the season. Yesterday was another frustrating performance where we had opportunities to pass the ball. You were screaming, pass Rashford, 
pass. Hoyland is free. Square it to him. Square it to him. But Marcus Rashford continue to dodge. Take shots after shots after shots after shots. Being greedy, Marcus Rashford, as sometimes they call him, Trashford. Rash Bandicoot was showing exactly what he's been so far. Trash as well. Making rash decisions and not really playing as a team player. Not contributing to the team as well in terms of interplay. Creating opportunities as well. Linking up with his um, compatriots and also teammates. He just failed to do that throughout the whole 19 minutes. Yes, as well, he gave us our best opportunities and best chances, but he just never took it at all, guys. Number five, Eric Ten Hag is looking clueless as a manager. It's the way he set up the team yesterday, the, the team, the, the substitutions that he made, taking off Rasmus Hoyland at 61 minutes and then saying Rasmus Hoyland is not fit enough to play 90 minutes, knowing that Rajmish Hoyden has been involved in international duty for his team and played a good amount of minutes, which means to me he's been building himself up um, after the Arsenal games throughout the whole international break to come back and worthy enough to be playing 90 minutes. So when Eric Ten Hag said that, you look at him like, hmm, Mr. Ten Hag, are you sure you know what you're talking about? And of course, putting Bruno Fernandes centre-back during the dying minutes of the second half against Brighton, Yes, yes, he, he just said it. You know what? I cannot trust in Harry Maguire or Johnny Evans, so I will put Bruno. But that, again, that backfired as well. Tactically, as well, like I said before, he doesn't know what he's doing. This pressing game, this playing possession-based football has not been apparent throughout this whole start of the second season that he's been going through. And it's the second season syndrome that's been going through Eric Ten Hag's mind as well. Just not strong enough and he's looking clueless as well. He's looking stupid and making us question his decision makings as well, guys. The substitution didn't make sense. The way the team itself didn't make sense. The way he got found out by the Zerbi in that, in that second half as well didn't make sense. You know, the diamond, it's just not working for Eric Ten Hag. And how long will this be until people say enough is enough when it comes to Eric Ten Hag, you know? He's looking suspect, guys. It's not looking good for us as well, for Manchester United fans. We are stressed out. We've had enough. We've really had enough with this nonsense. But here, guys, this is the five things we've learned from Manchester United playing against Brighton. Hopefully, the next game against Bayern Munich becomes even better in terms of improvement. But I, I highly doubt it, guys. It is what it is. Guys, you let me know what your thoughts on the game against Brighton. What, um, what, what other things you learned against Brighton as well? Let me know in the comments. As always, remember to subscribe to Red United TV. We are live tomorrow, Monday, 8 p.m. to do the full reaction with the guys as well on the game against Brighton. But yes, it is what it is. And follow Red United TV on Instagram and follow us on Twitch, man. Yeah, guys, it's been a long one and it's been hurtful. It hasn't been entertaining at all this second season uh, despite all of the crisis that's been going around Manchester United the stories the Hollywood FC the soap opera that's been going on Manchester United we're still we're still not doing well there's a lot to improve on but would Eric Ten Hag survive would a club as well sell would the owners sell it is what it is but till next time guys remember to keep it united and remember to keep it red united your boy is out peace <laughs>